Hello everyone. Um, now we're going to talk a bit about the homework for specifically and I want to go through the file and the various exercises that you have to do and also the test cases that, um, that are accompanying homework for. So first let's open the, the file homework for dot bracket and as you can see you have the three programming exercises and then to uh, manually graded exercises which you sh should fill in the answers in each of these comment sections but today we're only going to cover the programming assignment and as you know the first exercise is to implement function the substitution function uh, of lambda s so that's why you have uh, the s colon uh, prefix in the function okay so for here we have three parameters that we are expecting in our function. First one is the expression that we want to find and replace. Var is going to be the variable that we want to find and val is going to be the value that we want to replace. So uh, just a quick recap. This is the function that you are expected to implement and what you should be doing is very um, informally is this each of these lines represents a possible case of the implementation of this function. So what that means is that implicitly there's some condition going on. So what is this condi condition branching on? Well, it's branching on the input. So let's first recap what the notation means. Well, the notation is talking exactly about this function, right? So the first thing exp is going to be the left hand side. So secondly, you see x and then arrow v. Okay, so this means x and the arrow v. Okay, so we're saying this is a sum expression and there are multiple of them. Let's go through them next. So there's essentially an expression here and then there's the variable that we want to replace and the value that we want to replace by. And then you have equals and then on the right hand side you have the return value. So you have a condition and this is going to be the return value. Okay, so let's see what happens. So basically what we're saying is if we if the input is a number, so let's go here. Why did we define? Okay, so if it's a number, right? So if we, we can use this function to check if the expression is a number. So if it is a number, what should we do? Well, we should just return the number as is. That's what we're saying. Okay, so this would be one of the rules of the implementation. The second rule is saying if it's a variable and the variable x matches that of the input here, so we're saying that when we're implementing, if expression is the same as the variable, right, because the expression is a variable, and if that expression is the same as this parameter, then what you need to do is return vol. So you need to return this value. Then you have another condition, which is you have an x and a y, and you know that x differs from y. So that's the else case. In that case, what do you do? Well, you return y itself. Okay. And then the next thing that you have to do is you have to look at the function declaration, and you have to look at the value here. Right? So what is this function declaration? Well, we look at function declaration, we have to look at how the structure that represents a function declaration is defined. As you know, there's two fields, params and body. But what you really want to use is param1 and body1 to get the to get the x and to get to the e. Okay. So if we're saying that we want to check if the parameter of the function declaration, param1, equals x. And if that's the case, what do you do? Well, you return the expression as is. So you don't replace. We talked about this as shadowing. That's when the parameter is shadowing whatever the substitution, so it, it stops there. And therefore, it just returns the function declaration given an input. The other case is the second line, where x is different than y. So your lambda parameter 1 is different than this variable given as an argument and if that's the case then what do you do you have to recursively replace the body just the body okay so you use lambda body one to obtain that body 
just make sure that when you create the new lambda, you create a list with the single element. Okay. So let's look at the tests now and understand them. So the tests, I've, I've documented them in my own file. I can update that in, and re-upload the hw4zip. So what we see is we have multiple cases. First, we have a definition of a function, and this function only exists in the tests. So notice that we are that I'm opening test minus w4 dot bracket, right? So this function is just defining a test, a way to simplify the test cases. And why am I doing that? Well, because as you can see, there's a lot of it becomes very verbose to write a term of our our function, right? So what we would like to do is if we want if I want to do directly uh, substitution, I would have to do E subs, right? And let's say I want to do, but E subs is not defined. Ah, yeah, it is defined. Okay, so now if I call this function, it's always going to return. Um, it's always going to return to do, right? Because it's not defined. Um, but if I were to write a proper input, let's say I want to write the first example where I have a variable, the way I would write it would be creating variable. And I would say, oh, this is variable x, and I want to replace x x by a number 1. Okay. So if I did that, well, my, my function subs is the template, so it's returning. But this is how you would call it. So this is how you would call replacing x, find and replace in expression x, x by 1, replace x by 1. So if you do that, the return should be 1. right? So what this code is doing is it's doing a few things. So what it's doing is it's taking um, the datum that you provide. You provide three datums, right? The first datum is going to be quoted record code, right? And then what it's going to do first, it's going to parse that as an expression. So remember, you implemented parseST. So now hw4util also has a parseST. So if it does have that, it uses the parse ST to convert the datum that you give as first parameter as a valid record code uh, in our AST that we've defined. Then what you see here, this pair that is written with cons, declares this bit right here. So we are replacing x by 1, so therefore we pass cons, and we just do symbol x and 1. And again, recursively, it's going to parse x and it's going to parse 1. So you can put whatever code you want in this find and replace. And then what we see here, let's look at the test, what it's saying. So if I want to replace in the expression x by 1 in the expression x, the return value should be 1, as you would expect, right? Because x should be replaced by 1. So what I see here is that in the test, I write quoted x and then a con with quoted x, the variable, and 1, the value that I want to replace. And then the last parameter is the value that is expected to return, which is 1. So the, the value that I'm expecting the substitution to return. Again, a, a quoted term. So let's see here. So you are not using directly AST terms, and that's the whole point, right? The whole point is you write qu uh, datum, so quoted code, and the return should be quoted code, so because it's simpler, you just see the syn the concrete syntax. So let's see the second example, and now I'm just going to explain the intuition of each test case, so that you have a better understanding of what I'm trying to say here. So in the second test case, what I'm saying is, if I have, if I'm finding it, if I do a find replace of x by one, right, and my expression is y, then there is nothing. There's the expression is simply y. There is no x. Right, so I should return y as is. Right, so I'm saying that the return of substituting x by 1 should be y unchained. Right, so I write the text, the test case as quoted y, and then the, the pair that I want to replace, x by 1, and the return value should be 1. Okay. So now I have a test case for numbers. So if it's a number and I do a find and replace, I just return the number itself. Now let's contrast this with the rule. So that's exactly what's saying here. If I have a number and I replace x by v, then I should have the same number 
and that's exactly what the test is saying, right? The test is saying if, if you do a, a substitution number 10, it should get 10 back. And then these two rules, they're matching which rule? These two test cases, they're matching the first rule. The, the rule right here, sorry. This rule. This rule and this rule. So the first case where x matches x is exactly this case, right? And the other rule where x differs from y, that would be this case. Right, where y remains infinite, so y remains infinite. Okay, and of course the name here y could be anything because this is just saying some variable that we are calling y and some variable that we're calling x, but it could be any name of variable, any specific name of a variable. Could be foo, could be bar. Okay, so this we already covered which rule. So now we're on function application. Function application is the last rule of the slides, right? So what we're saying is we need to re recursively replace left and right hand side. So we have test cases where we first replace left and then we replace right. Um, and then we have a case where it does a mismatch. So first in this example, X and Y, and we want to replace X by Z. And that's what we do in the first test. So what we see is Z and Y. Second example, we have X and Y and we replace Y by Z. And now we see x remains unchanged and z remains uh, is changed. But you should always use recursion. So don't hard code your code for a function that specifically has a variable because you could have any expression there, right? So this x could be anything, anything. This could be a lambda here, could be a number, could be anything that you want, right? It doesn't mean that this has this just has to be valid uh, code. Um, but the substitution doesn't really care about whether it's meaningful code. That comes after when you're trying to evaluate and you get an error. So then the next last example that I have here is of a function application. So again, the last rule where we're doing a mismatch. So what we're saying is we're checking if we're trying to find and replace Z by 10 and on the, on both um, arguments of function application, there is no z, so the function should remain the same. So again, just to recap, what we write is the quoted code. So we don't write uh, s colon apply, we just write quoted x, y, and internally it's going to be translated or parsed as s colon apply, and this as s colon um, variable x, and this as s colon variable y, and so on. So then a more interesting case and the, the actual hard part of the exercise is handling function declaration and which is why it's the last thing and we have a few examples. The first case is where we have lambda x and x and note that x here is the same as x here. Okay, and this is what you have to care about. So this matches exactly this function. So in this function what we see is if we have a function and the s colon lambda param one matches var, then you return the expression expr itself. Okay, so let's see the test case. You see lambda x and we return x, right? And because x shadows this x, you just return the expression itself. So you can see here that it remains unchanged. So now let's see the next case the case where y differs from x. And in that situation, what you do? Well, you have to drill down and recursively substitute the body, right? Why? Because it's exactly the rule that is here, right? So if x differs from y, then what do you do? You leave, you create a new function declaration where you replace the body, okay? Return a new function declaration with the same parameters, but with a new body. The new body is the substitution of the old body where we replace, finally replace x by z. So let's see what happens in terms of test cases. Well, let me just arrange the code a bit. What we see is if we have y and y differs from x, that means I'm going to replace this x. I'm going to finally replace this x by 10, and that's why the return value is lambda y 10. Okay, so the next example is and you see there's simply no z 
So we're trying to find and replace a variable that is not defined in the, in the function. So that means that substitution should just return the value unchanged. And that's what we see here. Right. So what we write is again the quoted datum, the quoted code, valid record code. Right. So finally, this example, we see nested uh, lambdas. Right. Uh, but what we're doing is we see uh, y here, and this is enforcing that this test case is, is um, actually matching which one? Let's see, it's matching the first example. Why? Because x and this x is the same. So in this case, y and this y are the same. Um, and what when that happens, you just return the expression itself unchanged. So that's what we're doing here. Notice that it's the same as here, highlighted in blue. So finally, the last example, it seems that it's the previous example as before, but now with uh, lambda x rather than a lambda y. So this would match this example again. So what we see here is lambda x y, we replace y by 10. So we compare y with x, right? And because they differ, what you do is you replace the body and that's what you do. So in the next video, I'm going to explain the remaining code.